Good morning, everyone, and welcome to, I guess this is this month's weekly Wednesday webinar. It's the only one that we have this month. My name is Denise Broom. I work in the Engineering CAD Systems Office for DOT. And this week, I'd like to cover the CAD workflow for quantities with the new designer interface. So what are we going to be doing? Um, learn the recommended CAD workflow for getting quantities to web transport uh, or WT. Show the new enhancements and features in the new designer interface. And also how to generate summary pay item reports from the WebGate reporting um, to create the summary of pay item sheets in the CAD workspaces. You'll see I've got acronyms all over the place in here um, in my slides and I just wanted to add this one in so everybody knew what those meant. Um, basically DI, if you see that, that's designer interface. WT, web transport. Um, QM is quantity manager and that's the um, Geopack Bentley product and FDOT takeoff manager or FTM um, that's in the civil 3D workspace. All right. So, the biggest thing I want to cover today, like I said, is this workflow with quantities. Um, the basic steps um, we need to export a header file for the project from Designer Interface. Then we take that header file or XML file um, and we import that project header into Quantity Manager. Then once I have all my quantities and I have all of my information, I'm going to export those quantities in a report um, out of Quantity Manager, which again, an XML file, that I can then turn around and import into Designer Interface. I'm going to go through the Bentley workspace first, and then I'll also go through the um, Civil 3D workspace and those steps. And then after I get done with that, I'll go live and I'll show you guys in you know, go ahead and get into um, the um, whole workflow and show it to you. Okay, so basically I need to get the header file first, and it is an XML file. Once I log into um, Transport and the designer interface, um, it's going to look a little bit different from what you're used to seeing, um, but it goes straight into your projects. Find the project in your listing and you can export the header from two different places. I can either export it from right there on my project list page or once I get into my project, um, there is an export header um, option um, sitting there that will give me that XML file. Okay, so I can get that from either screen. Oops. Um, once I click on that to export it, it's going to show up down at the bottom of your, your um, Explorer window or browser window, I should probably say. Um, just select from the drop down the Save As option and then save that to your project discipline directory. All right. Once I have that header file, then I'm going to, I need to import that into Quantity Manager. So Basically, I need to open up Quantity Manager. I'm going to go to the Project Properties. And from the Project Properties dialog box at the very top, um, it'll have an Import AEC XML Infrastructure V33 Project. Uh, click on that button and then select the file um, that I want to download. Okay. Once I select it, it'll it, it'll populate the general tab, but then it also, I want to make sure you realize that there was a transport grouping tab. What this does is it every category that's already been opened up in transport will show up here so that I have these options within my database. Okay. Click the ones that you desire to have, you know, it's like if I know all I've got is roadway, maybe I untoggle signing so it doesn't come in. It. I recommend going ahead and opening um, just whatever is available, go ahead and selecting them all um, and importing whatever's out there. So once I have my option set, I set import and you're good to go. 
at that point, the next step is after I have all of my quantities put into my database, I then need to ex export those out to an XML file. So um, from the export options, I need to go in Quantity Manager, I would go to Project, Export, Export, and it will bring up a, another dialog box. Um, a key thing that whenever you um, are creating this export file um, is to make sure that you select the pay items that you want to export and make sure, and it's really not shown on the screen, but I'll show it to you live. Make sure that the transport grouping, um, it's kind of underneath right here, make sure that it's set to the correct um, grouping. Um, for example, 0200 for roadway. All right. So then I get my export dialog. Make sure that you're using the AEC XML plus funding option and that we toggle on the rename transport groupings. Leave this as design estimate. And this is a um, little confusing because if design estimate is there as a transport grouping, that can give us issues. But it, I, I'll show it to you guys whenever we get there and it'll make more sense. But we definitely, we, we need to turn this on um, so that we get the design estimate once um, and then, then give it a, a name. Um, basically what I've done for the CAD office, we have a project sitting out there with all zeros. So it's my project number with quantities.xml file and then I tell it to export. Um, there will be a dialog box that's going to tell you that there's missing properties that transport needs. Um, that's fine, it's normal, uh, but it's not going to cause any problems. Just click OK, get through that dialog, and then it'll tell you that it, the export was complete, and you'll go ahead and click OK again. Um, that file that came out of Quantity Manager um, is not rounded all the way to the correct accuracy according to the basis of estimates. Um, and the reason that it's like that is because from that database, we're also selecting our plan summary boxes um, and creating this plan summary boxes. And each individual quantity needs to be rounded one, one decimal place further than the accuracy set by the BOE. Okay, and that's in the directions and um, I can't remember, but one of the, one of the chapters in the BOE sets that um, direction to us and that guidance. Okay, so in the MicroStation side, we have a um, tool that we've developed. Um, it's the XML Quantity Rounder. Um, and basically, um, I've shown you how to get to that. You can get to it from the Quantities Tasks menu. Um, it's the little circle here. Or from Actions Transport Quantity Rounder. It opens up this dialog, and basically what it does is it goes through that XML file, it finds the unit, and then it takes the quantity value and rounds it to the correct decimal place. Okay. It does not overwrite the original file. Um, it will create a file, it's the exact same name, and it adds at the end underscore rounded so that you know which one is the new file. Okay, and once that file's been created, just tell it to finish um, and exit the application. All right, once I have that XML file, then I want to import the, that file with all the quantities into the designer interface. Okay, so I would go back to my project, um, and I can I get either on the, the project list or the project details, there is an import button. Okay, so I'll click on import, navigate and select the file that I just created, all right, the underscore rounded, and then tell it on the next screen, tell it to upload. Like I said, I'm going to show you this live in a few minutes. Um, so once I have that in there and I tell it to upload, you're going to get one of two screens. Um, it's either going to give you a little table that has the green 
and it will tell you every single pay item that you just added to it and it's going to tell you that your loads basically successful all right if I don't get that it's gonna I'll get the red one and the red one means that there were errors something it it could be a blocked pay item for the spec year that you're you're loading another example of like this one I've got a category included in that XML file for design estimate that's not a valid category um, in transport so if I get have design estimate on there it's going to give me this this red invalid category error okay if I get any errors just all I need is just one any errors at all then none of my quantities get loaded in okay if it does succeed everything will get loaded and it overwrites whatever I have in transport if I get an error message I should be getting some kind of message in there that gives you a clue as to what you need to fix and that's the entire workflow from the Bentley workspace side that's the tools that we use and that's the steps that you need to go through when we're talking about if you're using Civil 3D the export option to get the header information in that XML file as well as importing those quantities back into designer interface those two steps are the same but within the Civil 3D workspace they have some different tools all right, and I just wanted to show you guys these. So basically, from that workspace, uh, you guys would use the FDOT Takeoff Manager. It is available on the F. Ribbon. There is a option you click on the F. Takeoff Manager icon here, and then it's going to open up FTM, the dialog. Make sure that you take and select the quantity reports to get this XML file and basically they have it in one step from here I would tell it to compute my quantities okay so it goes into the file that you're in and it's going to gather all of those quantities for me all right from there it's going to give you a takeoff report and there's different options and this particular one is an each uh, but they also have you know area takeoffs linear takeoffs so that information comes up in this this dialog all right from here I'm gonna tell it I want to go to the create transport file when I click on create transport it's going to give me um, this other dialog and from here basically I'm gonna go and give it the header file um, pull that in once I've pulled in the header file this other information will be populated I'm going to give it an output file name and then tell it to create the upload file. Okay, so theirs is a little bit simplified from ours. They've put it all right there and an easier way to do it instead of having to go to so many different places to make sure that you get it right with Quantity Manager. They have everything right here in one place. Okay, and that's everything that you need for the workflow. And now I want to go show it to you live from within MicroStation. Um, there's a couple of options that I have. Um, I can go to Actions, Transport, and then Designer Interface, and that's going to take me out there to the WebGate page. Or um, I can also go to Open WebGate. Um, we've changed this link from what it used to be in Select Series 4 um, so that whenever I click on this link, it's going straight to the WebGate page this is the webgate page and this allows me access to the designer interface as well as the reporting page um, that I need so first thing I need to do is go into the designer interface the designer interface it takes a mainframe user ID and password to get in so let me put my information in to get logged in and from here, depending on which office that you work in, what consultant that you work for, you guys should be seeing whatever projects are assigned to you. This 000 project is the CAD office testing project. Um, that's the one that I'm going to be working in this morning. So to get to the CAD office um, end of the project, I would click update or at this point all I really need is the header file so I can don't even have to go that far and I can just tell it to export the header 
down at the bottom of my screen, it pops up that I need to save this file. So I'm going to tell it to save as. That way I can go to my working directory and e projects quantities. Let's go down to, and I'll put this in the roadway directory and I'm going to save it. All right, tells me that it has completed. So now I can go over and I'll flip back over into MicroStation. I'm going to right click and tell it to go to Quantity Manager. And sometimes this takes a minute or so, sometimes it's quick. All right, so from here I'm going to tell it I can go to Project Open or I can click the icon to open up my project. Um, this is already here in my resources um, it remembers this path but most of the time it's it's whenever I click on this icon it's going to take you to the Bentley um, directory by default and you've got to navigate up to your wherever your projects are at um, but basically you want to go to wherever your database is All right so I'm gonna cancel that it's already set I'm gonna tell it to connect and it opens up and I have all of my quantities are in here already. Um, so I'm going to go to project and then I'm going to go to project properties. Okay. Notice that none of this has been filled out and I only have the general tab. So I'm going to go to project import. I'm going to grab that XML file I just generated from transport and tell it to open. And now on the general tab, you can see it's got my project number, the description as it was in transport the unit and my spec gear. The spec gear is very important um, that we have this correct. Um, and then down here this information did not get pulled in because this information isn't out there as part of that header that they extract from our project. Select the transport groupings. Like I said, I would recommend just pulling them out all in. Even if you don't use them, it's not hurting anything. But then I have the correct categories that I need in transport and I tell it to import. Okay, When I bring it in then I have, as you can see, then I have my categories set up as they need to be. All right. The category information also gets pulled over from MicroStation and the DNC manager when I pull that information over. So for instance, whenever I created curb and gutter, where am I, my quantity information? Oh, I know why. It's because it's in the roadway. You have to have your transport grouping set correctly, otherwise you don't see your quantity information. So as I'm coming in here and I see this information, then it's my transport grouping has been set to 200. All right, that is something that's very critical that we get right in order for this to pass through from here and let's get it into transport. If I don't have the correct transport category assigned then it that'll be an error whenever I get it to go into um, transport. Alright, so I have all my quantities. The next step, and I'm going to go ahead and leave this like it is, um, and I'm going to do it on purpose. Um, I would then go to export project export export that's going to bring up um, this dialog box I want to scroll all the way to the bottom to get the AEC XML plus funding leave this toggled on to rename the transport group to design estimate I'm going to give this a number or actually I can give it any name that I want um, it doesn't matter so I'm going to call it webinar and um, I also want to go to the pay item table and I want to grab all these quantities all right and I'm going to tell it to export those selected quantities and tell it to export there's my some information is missing just tell it okay it's fine it exported it out successfully all right. Then once I have that file out there, again I have a couple of ways to get to this. If I go to actions, 
transport quantity rounder or through the quantities task menu that we have set up I can also go to the quantity rounder open it up I want to process an XML file I'm going to take it navigate to my project QT roadway and then that was my XML file for my header I'm going to grab the webinar XML that I created for um, just now and I'm going to tell it to open that fast it's processed it and it tells me it's created this webinar underscore rounded dot XML and I'll tell it OK then I'm going to exit the application all right then I'm going to go back into um, designer interface and I can tell it to import very simple process once you get to this um, page you're going to tell it to select the files I'm going to go to um, navigate to my project um, go down and get the rounded XML file and tell it to open um, if you're using civil 3d um, that's part of that process you don't need to take that extra step all right so once it's selected I'm going to tell it to upload the file and BAM I have an issue so I have a invalid category in here and I did this on purpose so you can see this design estimate um, I'm going to have to check the other one. So at this point, I'm going to cancel, which is going to take me back to this other page. And I need to go back into Quantity Manager at this point and go take a look at what I have. If I have, just in Quantity Manager, I just kind of want you guys to see what's going on with this, is that I have different groupings. Um, if I tell it all transport groupings, then I see the quantities for everything. If I tell it I have, let's, let's for example, let's go to 300. I know I don't have any. Notice that these are all set to zero. Well, I know that design estimate, that's not valid, all right? And I see in here, oh, I do have, and this is very easy to do in MicroStation, is as you're creating your quantities, um, you may have a group of quantities that you forgot to set the transport grouping and it because all it says is groupings down at the bottom and if you forget um, and let me see let me, let me just show you guys really fast if while I am in DNC manager let me ID these shapes so this is some super pave that I've got in here if I go to compute let me go ahead and just compute quantities all right this groupings down here this is where it's set by default when you first come into quantity or the design and computation manager um, this will be set to design estimate and that is how it manages to get into your database all right so as you're creating your quantities just make a conscious effort to make sure that you change these groupings um, according to whatever you're working on so if it's roadway typically everything should be in 0 200 if you're working in signing and pavement markings it would be 0 300 structures you guys don't use this for this tool <laughs> but it would be 0 1 100 101 whatever your whatever category is associated with your bridge all right so that's where that comes from like I said it's really easy to do you just you know go in here and you just export without thinking about what that's been said to alright so how do I fix this from here do I have to regenerate quantities in MicroStation no um, you can come in here and once I've selected and figure out which one is on design estimate I would then come over to the quantity right click and tell it to edit under the edit general tab down here it has a transport grouping and I can change that to 0 200 all right and then tell it to update and now you'll see over here I'm going to go ahead and close that dialog this is now set to 0 under design estimate but design estimate is still in my list um, 
it's showing up in a line item um, within that XML as being a category, even though there's no quantities assigned to it. Okay, so at that point, I need to get it out of my database completely. So I need to go to project. Is it under projects? No, it's edit. Go to edit transport groupings. Select design at estimate and delete it. Do I want to delete design estimate? Yes. And we're done. Okay. All right. So now I can come back in, select all of my items, go through that same process, make sure I'm set to 200, project, export, export, grab the right one, webinar two, export it, Go back into MicroStation. Let me get rid of this. Quantity rounder, process that second file. It's been rounded, exit the application, and let's go back into designer interface. And then I want to import again. And this time it should work. Ta da! Okay. So now I have where it's telling me that all those pay items that I have in my database that was got pulled out in that XML, they have now been um, downloaded or uploaded, I should say. Um, into transport and now I can go back and look at my quantities and see what I have. All right. um, one thing to note is that it does overwrite whatever value is out there in transport and that's why it's an all or nothing thing. Either you get it right or you don't. That way you know what you have uploaded into transport. You don't have to guess, well did it did it, you know, because if you're trying to update quantities using this method, you want to make sure that all of them got updated and you don't want to have to guess, well, did my asphalt quantity load? Because you don't, you, you may not necessarily know and keep track of what all went up there. Not everything that we calculate is going to get automated. Um, this workflow that we have is recommended by the ECSO office simply because one, it, it makes things faster and more efficient, um, but also because it takes that component of human error out of the equation. I don't have to worry about whether or not I get fat fingers on my keyboard and I type the wrong numbers or I accidentally typed a number twice. This workflow um, and these um, capabilities within these tools allow us to automate the calculation, take it from there, put it into an XML file that we can transfer straight into transport without us ever having to touch those numbers or those pay item numbers either. But in the real world here, we don't have everything in that database. I can manually add items into the database from the MicroStation side. I can add my manual items like MOT, maintenance of traffic, all my earthwork quantities, but I have the same and it's really, it, at this point, it's whatever you're more comfortable with. Do you want to put everything into that database or do you want to manually enter it into transport? Either option, you still have to pick the pay item and I have to put it into transport. The next step, I guess, is to show you how do I get those manual items into transport. I just uploaded those quantities that were in here. So let me go back to the project list. From the project list, find the project that you need to work on and click on update. That takes me to my project details. Okay, from project details, I can see all of the categories that have been added in here for me. Um, as a designer, you should not have to put um, and add 
um, this in here. Um, structures might need to, depending on the bridge information, might have to go in and edit one of these categories. Just the, the header information, it's basically, it's all this information. For the most part, all we need to do and is go into the items. Um, this is going to be mostly where you do your work. All the items that I just put in there are roadway items. So I'm going to go to roadway and I'm going to click on the items. Update is to update the category. Um, information. That's this information up top about each particular category. If I needed to delete categories, I would click on it here and hit delete selected, which again, I don't think you guys should be doing much of that. I wouldn't recommend it. If I select items for that particular category, I see what's in there for that category. Once in here, I can go in and I can add pay items. So if I hit item, add item, you'll notice this is a lot different from what we used to have. You has, used to need to know what that pay item number is. Well, now I can go in and I can use a search. If I know what the pay item number is, I can start with 570. And you'll notice that right here, it'll start to turn, okay, as it's processing. Um, anything that has 570 in it, it will show up in this list, all right? Um, I can also search, so I can search by numbers. I can also search in here by tech to find a special detour. So now I have the list and I have all my special detours are sitting in here. All right, so let me just add this special detour to my list. I need to give it a quantity, it can't be zero. Um, this is a lump sum pay item. So I click one and then I tell it to save the item. Okay, so now I have special detours sitting in, in here in my project. One of the new features that we have in here is the ability to, once I have the pay item, I can click on that pay item, and it's going to take me out to another website, the DQE, Design Quantities and Estimate. And DQE is new. It got brought online back um, with Transport June 1st. And when I click on that, if you don't have access to get into the estimates, estimating side, um, you can't do anything else really other than these two tabs, the master pay item list or the basis of estimates. But if you'll notice, it brought up that special detour. I can open this up and I see in here the information that I find in the basis of estimates, okay? Because the basis of estimates has that database has been moved from where they used to have it into DQE. This will have the most latest up-to-date information will be in this database. Um, that database is what is used to create and generate the PDFs that is out on the basis of estimates web page that you can access through the net. I'm going to go back to designer interface and like I said, I just, I wanted to make sure you guys found this little um, tidbit here because I think it could be really beneficial. So another thing that is new is that say like the business sign, say I didn't have three, I had 30. I can make that change right here on the screen by clicking in it. Let's see, temporary crash cushions, maybe I have eight. I can come right in here, I can make all the changes. I can view however many items per page. So I can change that to 25 and now when I scroll, I'm scrolling through 25 items. Miscellaneous asphalt, 1.6 tons. So I can make all of these changes as I go in here and then just tell it to save changes. So that's another option that I have. I can manually add the items in and I can also go in and manually edit all of these quantities and I can come in and say, okay, I don't need this special detour. Toggle on, check mark in the box just by clicking on it and tell it to delete the selected. So that is the basics of working within designer interface to get the things that you need. Now understand too is that as long as I am in my project details, okay, I have this locked. All right, and if I go out to the project list, 
Okay, now that I'm back out, see this is ready for update. But if it's locked, it will tell me that it is locked over here on this um, where it says update. If someone is in there making changes, then this says locked. There's one. And it tells me who has it locked. It is a consultant working in for District 7. That way, if you go in there, you need to make changes, but someone else is in there, you can go ahead and tell them, hey, look, all right, you need to make sure that when you are done making changes to your project that you get out of that screen, out of the, the project, you go back to your project list, and then you log out. And up here it'll tell you logged in as with your user ID. And there's a, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a log out button up here. Make sure that you log out from the project list. That just ensures that project that you were just working in is not locked for anyone else. We've run into this multiple times um, during testing and getting this all online. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood how that all worked. Um, so that you make sure that you log out correctly so that if someone else needs to access something, they can. Another cool thing about it, if you had a, an extensive list and you wanted to try to navigate through this project list, you can come in here and start typing. And the more characters that I give it, the narrower the search and the results are. And then update and do whatever I need to do. So we took a look at the new designer interface and the enhancements of what they've added. I think they've done a good job. I think it's pretty cool. We're just working through some bugs of making sure that everyone has the right roles and everyone has the right settings to do what they need to get done and see what they need to see. So be patient with them. Work with your folks out in program management so that we can get all of this working the next step in Payatom workflow related to designer interface or transport, I should say, is our summary of pay items. That is accessed through um, either you can go through the web gate page or from within um, designer interface. They have a web gate reporting um, option at the top. And once I get to the web gate reporting site, all right. There's, if I want to do the basis of estimates, under general reports, um, this is where the summary of pay items report has been moved to. That is a common report that you're going to need. There's also a few reports under designers, estimators, and reviewers um, that a designer would be using. Uh, one of them is a project error report, and that one, um, it, it's a good check for you um, before you create your summary of pay items. Basically, because sometimes we put things into transport and it might be a couple months before we go back in and maybe that some of the pay items we don't think have changed. But somewhere between when you first entered them and they were valid and then whenever you go to create your summary report for your summary of pay items, one of those has been blocked. Okay, and it's no longer a valid pay item. It does happen. That project error report gives you that information. So it's a good thing to, to do um, and to run on your projects prior to creating this report. Before you used to have to know if there was a proposal and the proposal number or if I needed the summary. It's really simple now. Basically, you're gonna go into the summary of pay items report under select project, select the project that you have. It will go out there and it is going to find if there is a proposal associated with it, it will grab the proposal automatically. If there is not a proposal associated with your project, it will grab just that summary report for the project. Something to, to remember is that at the proposal stage, that's when they pull everything in and it's all in one report. If you have a goes with project, so you're trying to get the summary of pay items sheets in there and that proposal hasn't been created yet, then you're going to need to go into each one of the goes with projects and do the same thing for each project that you need the summary of pay items for. 
I want to make sure that I select the CAD file so that I get an XML file and then tell it to submit. At the bottom, you will get, you know, do you want to open or save? You want to click the button, do a save as, save it to your working directory. By default, it's going to use the project name.xml. Well, that's what our header file was. So you probably want to change that name to something different when you save it. And then once I have that XML file out there, I'm ready to create my summary of Payatum sheet within the CAD workspace. The standard file name is CESSRD01. Um, you can find that in the Create File Project. Um, this is this tool is the same across both platforms. Works a little bit differently, but has the same basic output. In MicroStation, we have a tool, very similar tool, um, in both MicroStation and Civil 3D for creating it. It's called F.Transport. It can be found um, either on the quantities workflow or you can find it off of the FDOT menu under actions, transport, transport quantities. Within Civil 3D, uh, you guys can find that on the FDOT ribbon on the quantities section. And there's a, an icon there, transport sheets. Click on that, you'll get the transport tool. From either one of these dialogues, the top portion is the same. And I'm going to hit browse um, to go out and select that XML file I just created from WebGate reporting. It will find that information from that XML file when it pulls it in. I can label the sheets, summary of pay items, and my starting number would be sheet two. It's that simple. Just go ahead and tell it to load summary pay items. It always uses a scale of one whenever it loads this into the file. So my sheets cells are um, at a scale of one as well as the tables and the text and everything else. If I'm using Civil 3D, there's a little bit more that you need to do. It does bring in the tables. However, you've got to add it to your sheet set. And this is a little more than I can explain to you. So if you guys have questions on getting this set up correctly, I recommend that you contact one of the guys in our office, um, Randy Roberts, Mike Rocca, or Scott Dixon. And that's pretty much all it is to creating our summary of pay item sheets. So let me go ahead and go back out there um, and let's go through this workflow. From designer interface where I left off, I can go to WebGate reporting. And while that's loading, I just want to show you really fast. If I was from the WebGate menu, um, that's this web transport reporting. Um, that would get you to where this page is trying to take us. And it's trying to bring up the login page. I do have to log in to each of the different interfaces. Um, so I'm going to log in. A lot of this stuff you guys may not see. It's based on your user login um, and how your user accounts are set up. So if you are not seeing what you need to be seeing out here, you guys need to contact your project managers um, so that they get your user roles set up correctly. But basically, here's my project edit report that I was talking about that I can run as a check. And we want to encourage everyone to run that report. General reports, there's some estimating stuff in here. There's a pay item list report that I can run based on ranges of pay items. I can get what I need um, if there's something I wanted to see. And then the summary of pay items report is the one I really want to look at. It's not user friendly necessarily. There isn't a search functionality. So if you're looking for something that starts in the fours, then you're just going to have to scroll down and then slow down once you get close. I want to grab the CAD rip file. If I create the report file, this takes me out and shows me the report in another browser. And from that browser, I could create a PDF file. Once upon a time, prior to the proposal, we would take the summary report and put it as a PDF. We would just insert that in behind the key sheet. We don't need to do that anymore because whether or not it's a proposal or a summary, I'm still able to get this XML file 
and put that information on a summary of pay item sheet. At this point, like I said, you no longer need to create that letter-sized piece of paper that would go into the plan set or into the PDF. Once I have the select CAD file, I'm going to select Submit. Again, I need to make sure I go down and tell it to save as. And I already have one called 00000. For this one, I'm going to put something at the end. You can say CES, you can put summary, you can put proposal, you can name it whatever you want, but just so that you know what it is. And then save it to your working directory. Once it's been saved, I can then go to MicroStation. I can open the Create File Project, create, set this to roadway design, um, go down to Summary of Pay Items, and create that sheet. Um, if you already have that sheet, which I do, you don't need to do this. Um, so I'm just going to go File Open, the CES SRD file. And all I did was create this file. There's nothing in it yet. So from here, I want to create my transport summary. If you have the situation where you cannot see the, the load button, I can modify this. I can open up the dialog, um, and that button will show up. Input file, I want to go to my working directory to get my summary XML, which I called CES, open. And you'll note that as soon as I opened it, it got the right county, it got the project number, it's going to summary, load my summary of pay items, it's going to start, start with sheet 2, and when I click on this, it's drawing the tables, it's placing the plan sheet and drawing the tables into the file all at the same time. So when I fit view, I now have, it doesn't have a, a proposal, so this is a project summary, all right, and it has all of my pay items in it. Okay, so this information all got put in here. If I had a goes with, I'd have all the columns in here for each of my um, other projects. If, and if I had a proposal, then they would all show up together. If it's a summary, it does not. Um, I'd have to do this multiple times with each of the summary files that I download. It goes on a sheet and it goes ahead and it numbers the sheets for me. So there's sheet 2 and there's sheet 3. Do you have to import your designer interface header before you start on quantities and quantity manager? No, you do not. You do need to keep in mind because I can create that database from DNC Manager after I've computed my quantities, I have that option to export them out and create a new database. At that point, I don't have that header or even an option to say grab this header when you create it. So no, I don't need to have it before I start my quantities, but make sure that before you export your quantities, that you go out and you get that header information because if that header information isn't exactly the same, it will not load into transport for you. Does importing quantities from Quantity Manager to Designer Interface override all pay items and quantities or just override all the quantities for the pay items included in the QM? It will override the quantities that are in the XML. Okay, not even necessarily everything that's in Quantity Manager. Remember, I selected what pay items that I wanted in quantities I wanted to put into that XML file. If I was only overriding and need to update one, then I would select that one pay item in quantity and create my XML file to export, and that's the only thing that would overwrite. How do you get Quantity Manager to open? There's several different options. I can go to Geopack Road Quantity Manager. I can right click within MicroStation and right click and hold and it comes up on the right click menu. It's also on the Task Manager. It's sitting right here um, to open Quantity Manager. So we have multiple ways to get there. Has the rounding been checked against the summary sheets to ensure the quantities in the summary are the same as the transport quantities? Yes. Could it be checked further? Yes, we've had to make some changes between Quantity Manager. The rounding was set to conservative instead of nearest, and it was causing problems. That should not be the case anymore. If you run into issues where it's not matching, you guys need to let me know. 
from designer manager we have to export the transport groups individually can we import into WT all groupings at the same time from quantity manager I'm only going to get one transport grouping at a time um, it will not allow me to have all transport groupings to create it and if you're talking about from civil 3d they might get that together but you would have to have all of your quantities in the same file and typically we don't have roadway and signing and pavement markings in the same file to get those two different groupings so I would have to say the answer to that would be no contingencies for asphalt quantities in some districts every district seems to want to do things differently however they need to be very careful if that's what they do we should not be using any contingency quantities across the board due to FHA FHWA restrictions to our funding so be very very careful with that do you need to export from QM for each transport grouping separately yes you do um, it doesn't allow you to do more than one can you do both manually entered in the ones from the database yes anything not accounted for in quantity manager you need to either go into quantity manager and add it manually or you need to go into transport and add it can you add more than one item yes what does the view do let me go back over there all right click update so I can get into it I think if I remember correctly the view allows you to see the category information that's making me log in again when I hit view it's giving me my category information for my project it's gonna have nothing because it's it's a CAD project it's just for us to test it's actually grabbing this information from a different database so if it's not correct you guys need to be contacting your project managers so that they can get this information in here right but that's what that is for so I have an update which for anything other than structures I don't have anything in here to update the alternate you can have alternate codes and that's something that is very rarely ever used the best example that I can give you is that sometimes there may be alternate categories that are set up if you run into that situation and you have questions on how this needs to be set up I would contact I'm thinking the estimates office would probably be your best bet um, so let me go out of there if you had a structure now that has a lot of different information for the structure categories um, you can update things within that your your structure numbers your um, work types there's a lot of information that you can do there is one more thing that I do need to show you is that whenever I'm in my project here note that I have an option for the CAD FTP site so if I go to and I click the CAD FTP site, it takes me out to where the AEC item.xml file is. That's a whole lot easier than it used to be. Within the MicroStation workspace, we also have a link sitting in there um, that will take you to this directory. Before, we used to have to get all those text files for CES. We don't need those files anymore. So all we really need out of the FTP site is this AEC item.xml. It's used in Quantity Manager. That you can get to Actions, Transport, AEC item XML download. And once I have it within Quantity Manager, I can go into Project Preferences and set that location where the AEC item.xml file is. And you can also, while you're in here, enable the ad hoc attribute editing as well as accuracy if you wanted to set it. Tell that OK. And then what that allows me to do is that, say I wanted to come in here and insert a pay item. The AEC item allows me to come in and click on this magnifying icon here. It opens up the select pay item and it allows me to use a filter so that I can put in pay item number 0102 okay um, it allows me to filter through the AEC items and I get that that's um, if I'm not mistaken I believe it's every, once I think every weekend it might be daily but I think that one's actually once a week it goes out there and it 
puts in updates so that you get the latest and greatest pay items that are available and open out in transport. I think I've answered everything. If you need help with anything that I have shown you today, feel free to give us a call and the CAD office would be more than happy to help you walk through whatever you need to do. We've got both platforms, both support this workflow. Our next webinar is scheduled July 8th. It's the first Wednesday in July. So we hope to see you then.